What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today we're kicking it old school and we're doing a classic rainy day sleigh get ready with me. I started this little series here on my channel back in like 2018 and basically what it is, it's just a casual chatty get ready with me, but usually I'm inspired by the rainy day. We just do like very dramatic, cool toned makeup because for whatever reason, well, it makes sense. When there's a rainy day, it's like cloudy and gloomy. I want to do cool tones and I want it to be dramatic. So that's what we did today. I did this very like dramatic, cool toned, smoky look. And I asked you guys over on Instagram if I should use my MAC single shadows or if I should use my Melt Mary Jane palette. I love both of these so much. Um, and you guys ultimately voted for the MAC Single Shadows. I have a lot of them sitting out here on my table because I just did my makeup. Um, but if you would like a video using the Mary Jane palette, let me know because this is beautiful. And now i am just like wanna do cool tones, very much so. So let me know if you'd like that, but yeah, I just had so much fun just hanging out, doing my makeup and like doing a very dramatic look. I feel like I've just been doing such natural looks for the last couple of years and lately it's just been fun to just dabble in like doing dramatic makeup again and doing like full coverage foundation and smoky eyes and like just going over the top. So I hope you guys enjoy, grab some coffee, sit back, relax, and let's just hang out and do some dramatic cool tone makeup. So, um, let me zoom in so you can see my face a little bit better. I have on some leftover mascara from yesterday. I just, sometimes I get really, really <laughs> lazy when it comes to like removing my mascara because that is the part in removing my makeup that I absolutely just hate doing because it's time consuming. I get in my eyes. It's just a whole thing. So a lot of times I just like work around it. And then it is what it is because especially today, I knew that I was gonna wear lashes today. So I'm just like, it doesn't really matter. I don't care. I know it's probably not the best for like the health of my eyelashes, but like it is what it is. I wanna use some different products because I have been using the same thing over and over. I'm gonna use the Hourglass Primer just to switch it up from the Lawless Primer that I've been using constantly. This is the Vanish Primer from Hourglass. I love this. I hope it's not too bright. It should be fine. I have, I changed the settings on my camera and I just don't know how it's looking, but I think it's okay. I'm gonna apply this to the center of the face first, work outwards, get the forehead. And then for my foundation, oh, I'm gonna use the Anastasia uh, foundation. I love this stuff. I also love the packaging. This is probably one of my favorite packaging for foundations. I just, I like the vibe. I like that it's like business in the front, party in the back. I have the shade 220N. I'm gonna pump it on the back of my hand. I've been really liking this technique. I used to do it this way all the time. The reason why is because it just, I feel applies your makeup more flawlessly. It just like blends into the skin better. You can control, you can, con I don't know, there's just more control over it. And I think I just got into a habit of pumping it right on my brush just for convenience. Um, it is quicker that way, but like it really does look better when, at least for me, when I do it this way. So what day is today? Today is Tuesday. One week from today, I go and get my hair done and I am so excited. I haven't had color in my hair since January and that was only a partial. And the last time I had like a full head of highlights, I can't even remember. It honestly was probably last spring. I'm not kidding, like probably last, May, I think. So it's been a year since doing like a full head of highlights. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so ready for it. I've loved not having the extensions in my hair. I'm shocked actually, because when I told my hairstylist that I was ready to take out my extensions, I was like, don't be surprised if you get a text from me in a week telling you to put them back in. Um, because I just like have this thing with like my hair, the length, the thickness. Like I always have, someone made a comment when I talked about that recently about how social media has ruined us. And I mean, I kind of like, I get what she's saying because there's like, you know, comparison and things like that. But she was kind of like poo pooing like my, relationship with my hair. For a lot of us, hair goes much deeper than just hair. It's, there's a lot of like emotion connected to it. And my, I've always had this connection with my hair. I remember in third grade, I had really long hair. And for whatever reason, I cut it. I think one of my friends cut her hair and then I was like, I wanna cut mine too. So then I did and I felt just whoo, stripped of my identity or something, I don't know. And I just remember even then, okay, I have like a mustache right now. I need to shave this. 
forgot where I was in my story. But basically, I've just always had this connection with my hair. I've had multiple times where because I wanted it bleached for so long, I would go to new people. There was, I think, three times where my hair like completely got bleached out and my hair fell out. And so I just felt like a naked mole rat. I went to this girl out of her house. She was a friend of mine and she did a really good job. I went to her for years, um, but I kind of just missed like having that salon experience. I wanted to go and like, I don't know, just like go and be pampered and like do all that stuff. So um, I started going to Amanda at the hair collaborative in Mokina and I've just been so in love with my hair ever since, but I still had this like identity thing with my hair. I did cut it a couple years ago um, in 2019 and I really loved that hairstyle, especially with how bright and bleached it was. I'm always tempted to go back to that, which is so funny because I like that has nothing to do with length. I think it just like I felt confident in that hairstyle or something. But as soon as that kind of started growing out to like this mid length, I was ready for extensions. It's like that collarbone length right here that I'm like, mm, I don't know. So anyway, I started getting extensions consistently in 2020. I did have them in 2019, but it was just to fill in the sides. But even before that haircut in 2019, when I chopped it off, before that, I was always wearing clip-ins or the halo, or so I always had something. Like throughout my whole channel, I've always been like popping in hair extensions. That's been for 10 years. Wow, when I think about that, that's crazy. So anyways, getting the hair extensions out of my hair was huge for me. Um, it meant a lot more than just like a hairstyle and it wasn't just because of people on social media having long hair. I actually prefer like when someone takes out their hair extensions and I see them post about it on social media, I prefer that. I think that they look, I think everybody looks so beautiful in just like their natural form. Not to say that they don't look beautiful when they have on all the things, but you know what I mean? Like I love when someone embraces their natural beauty. So anyways, with that being said, I've been embracing this color while I have it because um, I know I'm about to change it, but I just, like I look back at old videos from that last summer and the summer before and like I just love this bright blonde hair. And I'm probably not gonna go as bright as that uh, from two summers ago or from like 2019 blonde, but I just need some brightness. Just some highlights are gonna make me feel a little bit better because I just am feeling a little blah with the color. I'm loving the length. I'm loving um, everything about not having extensions, which is just shocking to me, just shocking. <laughs> but um, yeah, I am, I am eager and ready. I made this appointment a little over a month ago. I think it was like a month and a half ago. And I've been eagerly waiting and I'm so excited. Um, I totally forgot. I wanted to use this Jaclyn Cosmetics Eye Primer. Is it too late to do it? Because I already did my foundation. Let's try it. I've heard her talk about it all the time. I haven't seen anybody else really talk about this, but we are gonna give it a go. So, oh my God, that's cold. That makes my eyes wanna water. Whoo! Okay, I can't do that. We're gonna just use my finger. I just made it like pink. I've had this here for a while and I just never grab it because I just always forget. It's such an extra step. Like I, I don't have an eye primer specifically, um, like an under eye primer. So anyways, I'm now gonna go into the Catrice True Skin Concealer in the shade 20 Warm Beige. I've been loving this again. I put that here and here and just on my pimples. And then I'm gonna go into my Beauty Blender sponge and blend that in. Um, quick question, so on my uh, April favorites video, I got a comment saying that the music was too loud in the background. Let me know if you feel that way um, or if it was just this one person because that is something that I'm like very attentive to. I 
hate when music is too loud in videos. I feel like there should be no music at all. So, but when I read the comment, I was like, really? Because I felt like I could barely hear the music. So I just want to ask, I just want to know like your opinion. If the music in my videos is too loud, I try to keep it low, but still like, I, I it should be like an afterthought. You shouldn't notice it. But then when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, there's music there. That's how it should be. If you feel like it's taking over, let me know because I don't like that. Um, and I felt like I did a good job, but um, now I'm like overthinking it. So let me know. I'm gonna put the music at the same level as it was in that video. Let me know what you think and if it's too loud. Okay, I did like how that concealer laid over top of that primer. Um, it kind of just like smoothed over. We'll see if it like last any differently or whatever but that was a nice application i want to try this again this is the laura mercier tinted moisturizer bronzer in the shade sunlight number four i don't actually think that i've tried this on camera yet but i tried it a couple of times over the month and i've loved the way it looks but one of the days i felt like my makeup did not last with it. So we're gonna try it again today because I don't have anywhere to go. I'm just gonna be in the house doing some editing today because it's rainy. I love editing on rainy days. Um, so I just pumped a little bit on the back of my hand. I'm gonna pick it up with my brush like that and just start stippling it on the skin. Isn't that such a beautiful color and such a beautiful texture? I just feel like it's so thin and just like disperses so nicely. It's also because it's a tinted moisturizer bronzer, I feel like it's more sheer. So it just looks so natural. That's just going to be my base. I'm going to go in. I really want to wear like a lot of makeup today. I'm really in the mood for it. I feel like I've just been in such a natural makeup phase for so long that now I'm just like... I've been more in the mood to do very dramatic over the top looks, things that just like aren't wearable and like I want to wear a lot of foundation, I want to wear a lot of contour and just like go for it. Just because it's been so long of me like just doing something more natural for so long. Oh, I've got an itch. I'm gonna go in and powder my face before going in with cream blush. Now that can seem a little bit backwards, but I just want to set this into place so it doesn't budge. Where's my powder? Reveal yourself. There it is. Uh, Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And I'm gonna apply this with my sponge. You can use a brush, you can use a poof. Whatever your heart desires. Ooh, I like really applied a lot there. That was unintentional. I'm gonna go into the Milani bronzer in Sunkissed, this one here. I've been seeing your request for more drugstore makeup. Here's the thing, last summer I went through my collection and I got rid of so much makeup. I got rid of anything that I just wasn't consistently using and kept one drawer per category and just donated or tossed expired makeup, I donated stuff that I wasn't using and I only kept things that I truly and genuinely used. Unfortunately, a lot of that stuff was drugstore makeup. I find it hard to find amazing quality products at the drugstore, it really depends. Now, stuff like this, like this Milani bronzer, I'm obsessed with. I just haven't used it in a while, still in my collection. Um, but I kind of just stopped buying products just because they're drugstore or just because it's a new launch. I now only buy products that truly get me excited. Doesn't matter if it's drugstore or like a high-end product, if it's something that I genuinely am interested in, then I'm going to buy it. So I haven't like bought makeup in general in a really long time. I ended up not even buying anything from this Sephora sale that just happened. I have just been like a little bit more practical with my purchases. I've been more mindful with my purchases and my recommendations. Like I've just been more mindful with the things that I talk about because you guys, inflation is real. And so that's why I understand like you guys wanting to see more drugstore products. I just like don't have a ton in my collection anymore because I just ended up going through my collection and purging stuff and a lot of that ended up being drugstore stuff, stuff that I just wasn't using. And to me, that was a waste. That was a waste of money, that's a waste of product. Even if it's a lower price point, if it doesn't perform that well and I'm not really enjoying it, then to me, that's a waste. I end up, I would rather spend more money on something that I know I'm going to like or something that I know I'm gonna use a lot. So that's just kind of been my mindset. Um, let me know your drugstore favorites because I have just had a hard time finding things or I'll find, here's the thing, I'll find like 
gold. I'll find like these e.l.f. putty blushes and this bronzer, but like, and like lip liners. There's so many great lip liners at the drugstore, but I feel like it's just few and far between to find something amazing. And the things that I do find that are amazing, I use them over and over again. And then, I don't know, there's just like not a lot of variety of great quality. You know what I mean? So let me know your favorites. I find them to be tricky to find because even when I do find like a great foundation, it breaks me out. Or if I find a great lip color, I don't like the finish or it has like a weird funky smell and that really does bother me. As far as like mascara, I'm obsessed with the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I don't even use anything else. I would like to repurchase the MAC Extended Play Mascara because I really love that for my bottom lashes. There's something about that mascara that just mm, does it for the bottom ones. But yeah, I don't know, especially like eyeshadow. It's very hard to find like a drugstore eyeshadow. And then here's my other bone to pick with it. Once you find something that is really, what was that? A screw just came loose on my bench. I hope this does not fall apart. The other bone that I have to pick with it, that when you do find something that's really good, it ends up being close to the same price as something that you would get at Ulta or Sephora. So then I'm like, I don't know. That's just, my personal opinion, even when I was like 19, just getting into makeup, I would save my money and I got the original Naked palette. Even then I still was just like, I would save my money and get like the nicer thing just because it was just 10 times better. I just find like it's hard, especially now that like Makeup Geek is gone. I am just like, what is life with makeup? Like that was my favorite brand. It was not crazy expensive. It was a $5 eyeshadow where like a MAC version was 10, now $15 an eyeshadow. So it's just now that they're no more, I'm just like, I don't know. It's, I'm bummed. So anyways, let me know your drugstore recommendations of things that you have tried or like are your holy grails because I feel like I have my holy grails, but it's just a small collection. But yeah, this bronzer is one of them and I love it. I should see if they have another color that's more warm because this does go more neutral. It's not cool, it's just more neutral. It's very beautiful though. But yeah, like in general, I just kind of stop buying things just because of the hype, unless it's something that I genuinely am interested in. Like I'm trying to think about anything that's come out recently that I'm like, that was more hyped up. I can't even think of anything because I just, nothing has really like grabbed my attention anymore. Um, I'm like more interested in old school stuff and stuff that's like no longer, stuff that's like discontinued, unfortunately. I mean, I remember testing new makeup videos was like the thing. Everybody loved seeing what was new. But I just feel like now, like, are we over that? Are we over seeing testing new makeup? Let me know. I just feel like so much has changed in life <laughs> that seeing what's new all the time is just not that interesting anymore, at least to me. I'm just not like into it. You know what would be fun? I would love, I haven't done like a foundation review wear test video in like 500 years. I was thinking it could be fun to do that with my Holy Grail foundations. Like I have a good chunk of foundations that I just love, but I don't think I've ever done like a review on them so you could see what each one looks like all day long. I think that could be fun. Let's kick it old school, you know? Like that's the shit that started on YouTube, like, back in the day. That could be enjoyable. You know, this was supposed to be a rainy day and it turned out to be beautiful and sunny. What the hell? I'm adding some Bone Beige from MAC just to intensify this. Ooh, we did a really dramatic contour today, huh? I'm using the NYX Three Steps to Sculpt just to refine this nose contour a little bit. For my highlighter, I'm gonna go into the Benefit Cookie Highlighter. I haven't used this in so long, but it's a more of like a pearly icy. Okay, I feel like you can't see it because of that mirror, but it's this like more icy frosty color. And I'm gonna pop that on my cheekbones. Center of the nose. Cupid's bow. Now for blush. Sigma came out with some new cream blushes that I've been dying to try. Um, this one is in coral and we're gonna apply this with a Hollywood complexion brush from Charlotte Tilbury. 
and stuff all this on the cheeks. Ooh, very pretty. We'll see how this lasts as I do my makeup, because right now I feel like it goes on really pigmented and bright, but I just know it's gonna fade. But it's like just really pretty. I'm gonna bring this up on the forehead and in a little color there. Okay, before we go into the eyes, I'm gonna spray my face with the Morphe setting spray. Whoop, wrong way. We are gonna be using the Anastasia Brow Freeze Wax. I've just been loving this. I feel like this is the reason why I can do my brows recently. It just really helps to give them some shape and some fullness. And then also once I go in with the product, with like the pencil, when I go back in with whatever's left over on this, it just helps to kind of just like blend it out and soften it. Okay, right now they're looking crazy, but it just helps to, just helps me with the shape. This is what I would look like if I got my brows laminated. That would just be, I don't know, I'm not a fan. I'm going to use the Oak Lawless Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil. I've been really liking this. And I'm gonna, oh no, I just pulled that out. That's not what we want. I'm going to bring this through the brow. These are a little chunky, hold on. Okay, that took me 500 years to do my eyebrows, but at least they look okay. They were looking very crazy there for a second. I had to use the Anastasia Pro Pencil just to like clean it up and stuff, but I think they're looking all right now. I'm gonna go into the Glossier uh, Boy Brow in brown. Run these through. Okay. Finally time for the eyeshadow. I really wanna do some like very dramatic smoky grays and mm. So we're gonna do the Painterly Paint Pot to prime the eyes. I'm just picking it up with my finger cause my nails are short right now. And just apply this on the lid. Make it so everything goes on very pigmented, doesn't skip around and lasts all day as I sit inside my house and edit. <laughs> Maybe I'll run to Starbucks, I don't know. Sometimes it's nice to just get out of the house and have a change of scenery. Um, there's this beach nearby, which nearby, it's like 30 minutes away, but they have this uh, pavilion and I think it would be so much fun to just go there and edit because it's just a room with tables. If the tables are set up, I don't know if they are right now, I'll have to go take a gander. But I just think, oh, it would be so much fun to just go there and edit like bring a coffee bring some snacks and you can edit indoors but it looks over the beach so i'm like that would be such a vibe i wouldn't want to go alone because there's like no staff on duty i don't think so you're like literally there by yourself and that's a little sketchy that freaks me out a little bit um okay let me just double check and make sure that the pole is still the same i'm pretty sure you guys want the max shadows Ooh, it got closer. The MAC single shadows are still winning, but it did get closer. So if you guys want another cool toned look with the Mary Jane palette, let me know. I'll show you what that looks like in case you do. Um, that is what this one looks like. So if you want another look, let me know. But today I'm gonna be using my MAC single shadows and we are gonna create a smoky look today. What do I want to start out with? Okay, I'm gonna start with Omega, this shade here. This is also really good if you have blonde hair. It's like good for your eyebrows. And I am going to bring this in my crease and outer corner. This is gonna be a base for everything else. I don't actually really know the direction I'm gonna go with this look. I'm kind of thinking like an all matte, smoky, blown out look very not wearable like i am not wanting to look like yeah <laughs> like i want to look smoky we're gonna start light i'm gonna probably use a bunch of shadows and just play i'm gonna grab a little bit of tita tint which is a little bit warmer and just warm up the crease if you've been here and you've seen my cool tone looks before then you know i love mixing in a warm color with the cool tones because to me it makes the cool tones pop even more it's like that hidden secret because i feel like 
Um, I mean, I didn't make it up, but I just mean like, that's just like the, the secret ingredient. Like, you know, when someone makes a cake and there's something or a batch of cookies and there's something in there that's different. This is that secret ingredient. Once you go in with all your cool tone shades, it's gonna peek behind and just make the cool tones pop even more. So now we can go in with another shade. I'm gonna do sandstone. Same brush, just gonna bring this down a little bit lower. And we're just gonna gradually build up this look. Do little by little. If you go in right away with like dramatic dark shades, it's gonna be really hard to blend that out. So this way we can start light, build it up to the exact deepness that we want. I'm gonna bring this shade and mix that with tea to tint and bring it underneath the eye. I'm looking upwards. I don't even have my mirror here. I'm just wiggling it around. I'm already loving it. Okay. We need to move into a smaller brush. Let's do this color, which is charcoal brown. I bet this would be really good in your eyebrows as well. Really tapped off the excess there. Now that a lot of the product is off my brush, I'm gonna bring it here in this socket, just very lightly. And I didn't do this at first because it would have been too dark in there and it would have like brought too much deepness this way. I just felt like Jim on The Office when he's telling Pam how to breastfeed. It's kind of like a, like, like that. Like, Do you oh. want to try it, Jim? Mm -mm. I'm just doing it once a lot of the product is off the brush just to add a little bit of shadow, but not too much. You still want the deepness to be on the outer part. We're going to keep using 500 shades. I'm going to go into Brune, this color. Oh yes, this is more cool toned. The other ones were pretty neutral. Now we're getting cooler. Now, if you don't have like 5 million shades of shadow, you can still get the same look. I am just playing and having fun. You can pick probably three shades to get the exact same look that I'm gonna be doing today. But what you wanna do to create the dimension is work with the pressure and the amount of product that you're using. You can use this same deep dark shadow and get a light wash of color if you go in with like a fluffy brush and a very light hand. Say you go in with a very dense brush and more pressure, it's gonna be more true to this color here and be more intense. So you can get a gradient uh, with your shadow ju just with one shade and just changing the pressure and the brush style that you're using. So keep that in mind. But today I just really wanted to play around. So we are just going for it. I miss using 500 shadows. We want more deepness. We want more. Um, I am gonna go into Give a Glam. This is like a rich dark plum, actually. So we're gonna add that in. I'm taking this on a Fox 3 brush, packing this right at the lashes, and then building it up. So it's right on the lash line right here, and then it kind of angles up into the outer lid and I'm flicking upwards. Mm -hmm. Go in and blend out the edges there. Ooh, I'm loving where this is going. If this was not intentional, but it's a vibe. It's kind of like really kind of cupping in here, rounding out and I love it. So, I guess how I did that was with the, um, not the darkest shade that I used, but the second to darkest, the brune and the charcoal brown I had on this brush. And when I was blending it, I kind of carried it in. So it kind of just lightly hooked into there. And it's like, ooh, it's just really a vibe right now. So I'm gonna kind of work with that and add a little bit more with whatever's left over on this brush. Again, don't go in directly with these shades right in this area. It will be way too deep, but just gradually add once a lot of the product is off and it will give you that look. Taking more of that tea to tint shade on the bottom lashes. By the way, MAC likes to randomly discontinue shades. If there's anything that I'm using that is no longer available, I will link a similar eyeshadow down below. 
All of these are brand new though. So like I bought them last fall, so they should still have them. But randomly there will be shades that I thought were a part of their permanent collection and then they're gone. So if, if that happens, it's usually because they have something very similar. So I will link similar things down below if I don't have like the exact one available anymore. I need this to a little bit more. So we're just going to do that here. Okay, I'm gonna take whatever's left over on this Fox 3 brush, put it right at the bottom lashes. I don't wanna drag this down too far because this is the deepest shade that we used that's on here. I don't want the bottom lash line to take away from the top. Cute. I'm gonna use a different brush and mix the lighter shades together and go right underneath that to help blend that down. This way it will still smoke it up, but then you don't have all of that deep, deep, deep color packing on the bottom lash line. It's just a little hint and then it gradually fades. And if you tend to like tear up a little bit when you're working on the bottom lash line, just literally look up into your brain like this to where it's like you can feel that your eyeballs are about to like roll backwards. Do that and then when you're working down here, like it, it won't bother you that much and you can still blink as much as you want and still blend at the same time and it's not gonna bother you as much. Oh, I'm so torn. Do we want to stay all matte or do we want to add a sparkle? I just don't know. Do I want to add a wing? Oh, the decisions. Well, before I do that, I'm going to take the pro pencil from Anastasia and pop that in my waterline. One of my favorite things to do. Pop. I'm going to grab nylon from Mac. This is, is this nylon? This is shroom. We don't want shroom. No way, bitch. We want nylon, which is in my warm palette because it is technically like a warmer undertone. It has more yellow in it. Um, I'm gonna take nylon and we're gonna pop that in my inner corners. So I'm gonna pick that up here. Start popping that there. I don't know where my brush is for this step. It must be on the floor. <laughs> I must have dropped it. There it is. There it is. The MAC 239 is just like one of the best brushes for the inner corner highlight. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pack that there. And then lightly kind of buff it up into the rest of the look. Very lightly, not too much. I'm going to lightly pat it up here. And then diffuse it with my finger. We don't want this to be too frosty. It's giving me like 90s smoky eye. I'll have to do a 90s look soon. Especially once I bleach my hair. The skinny brow and a smoky, ooh, ooh. I think I might just leave it as is because I am just really loving how this looks, this like gradient. A little sparkle would be gorgeous. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna leave it because it is so pretty. It's so cool tone. I think I'm gonna add just a little touch of the Tita Tint again, just a little hint to help warm that crease, which will help everything else look even more cool. Hop that underneath, yes. Also because I have blue eyes, adding in this warmer color helps to make that pop even more because everything else is so cool toned around my eyes and it's, a little too matchy matchy. If you watch the hills, you know that reference. Yeah, I feel like adding in this like little orangey pop helps my blue eyes to still stand out amongst all of these similar toned shades. I'm feeling this look. I think it's so pretty. Um, I think I'm just gonna do lashes and mascara because it's a vibe. And then we're gonna do like a very nude, overlined nude look with my lip. I'm gonna go into my favorite mascara, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. Okay, I bought these new lashes from, I think I got these at Target. They're by Love Scene in the style Quinn. I've never tried these before. We will see how these look because they do look pretty fakey, but they look like they could be very special. Um, by the way, this is my favorite lash glue. This is from Duo, but it's the clear kind that like brushes on. This is just my favorite. I've tried so many different ones and this one is just the best. Okay, the lash band seems a little stiff. So I'm gonna take each end and just like wiggle this. Yeah, look at that. It is 
is like well you can't see but it's it's a very stiff band which is gonna make popping it on your lash a little tricky so I'm just trying to wiggle it around so it's got a little bit more flexibility I need to place a MAC order soon, actually. I wanna get the extended plate mascara for the bottom. I mean, this does a good job. There's just something about the wand of that mascara that just like, <clears throat> is, it's just so good. Um, and I need some more Bone Beige from MAC. Let me know some of your MAC favorites because if I'm gonna place an order, maybe I'll try out some other things, but I feel like I've tried out so much of their stuff. I'll have to see if they have any like limited edition summer collection stuff but i don't know even with that i hate that stuff is limited edition because then when i fall in love with something then you can't get it again and it's annoying finally we can move on to the lips i did this lip combo yesterday i got so many questions about what was on my lips so i'm going to recreate it today um i had one person tell me that it looked like i had like a liner mustache or something i disagree i thought it looked good so I'm just gonna recreate it today. I did the Pat McGrath Contour Lip Pencil, which is a neutral to cool toned lip liner. So I'm gonna line my lips and overline them. And then I'm gonna very lightly blend them in because I don't want it to be all over my lips. I just want it to be feathered into the center. I'm just blending that in. You can use a brush if you want a full video on my lip line tutorial and like how to get your lipstick to last, look more plump and all of that. I'll link my video down below. I did like a full in-depth video on it. And now I'm gonna top it off with Honey Love from MAC, which is a beautiful nude color. I feel like it looks darker in the tube and then it applies a lot lighter on the lips. See, look how light that is in comparison. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, these are light. I'm gonna go back in with the contour lip pencil and just kind of fade over top of the edges. So that kind of deepened it up just a little bit. I want a gloss, I just don't want to use the ones that I have here. So let me go find a different one. I'm gonna add a little bit of this Too Faced Lip Injections Just Friends Lip Gloss. That's it, I feel like that kind of made my lips a little peachy, right? Should I add a little pink? I can't decide. I think I'm just going to leave it. This is the finished look. I love this. I feel so glam, so over the top, so smoky. This is gorgeous like date night look. This is gorgeous for an event, whether you're going to a wedding, whether you're in a wedding. I just love this. It's so smoky, but like sexy. I feel like this is like a nice, sexy, glam, smoky eye. Ooh. If you have more of a deeper skin tone or you have more warmth in your skin, don't be afraid to use cool tones and add a little bit more warmth in the crease like I did. You can go in with straight up orange even and just warm up that crease and it makes the cool tones a lot more wearable and a lot more flattering on your skin tone. So try that out and do not be afraid. If you end up recreating this look or got inspired from this look, please tag me in your pictures on Instagram. I would love to see your looks. Send me some DMs. I get DMs from you guys all the time showing me the, the inspiration that you got from my video, even if it wasn't a direct rep, uh, not replica, but like a, a direct recreation of a look that I did. A lot of you guys just get inspo from products or different looks that I do. And I love seeing what you create. Never feel weird sending me your selfies because I just, I have so much fun looking at your looks and it just makes me so happy that I can inspire you guys to recreate something. So that's it for this video. If you want another like rainy day slay chatty video, or maybe we could do like a summer day slay, spring day slay, whatever. 
let me know. I love these chatty videos and I love just vibing off the weather. It's finally gloomy. When I started this, it, it got kind of sunny and now it's like, it's, it's ready to rain, but that's it for this video. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I will link everything I use in this video down below in the description box. Please subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.